How do you build the future economy without becoming too big to fail? That's the paradox Sam Altman tried to explain this week. He went online and wrote, we don't want government guarantees. Then he said something bigger. He said that the OpenAI is planning $1.4 trillion of infrastructure over the next eight years. Let's unpack what that means. Welcome to Attention Span. My name is Ksenia, I'm writing Turing Post, and I'm covering machine learning and AI infrastructure for the last six years. This week, we're discussing the posts coming straight from Sam Altman's Twitter. This very long and detailed post reads like a CEO open letter. Half financial disclosure, half national strategy memo. Altman insists OpenAI does not want bailouts, but also says that the government should consider building their own AI infrastructure, like a strategic reserve of compute. This is a new term in the AI economy. So what's really happening here? What does he propose? As you know, training frontier foundation models cost tons and tons and tons of billions in GPU, energy, and data centers. But Altman insists the bigger risk is too little compute, not too much. Hence, locking in multi-year capacity. OpenAI's commitment through 2033 could total in $1.4 trillion. It's three times bigger, if you think about it, than Denmark GDP. That raises three questions. How will they pay for it? Will it make OpenAI too central to fail? Why invest fast ahead instead of scaling gradually? Altman tries to answer all three questions, and his answers reveal how the AI economy is mutating into an infrastructure race. The question number one, how will they pay for it? So as they say, when the AI doesn't want taxpayer money and tank taxpayer guarantees for its data centers. If the company fails, others will fill the gap. That's the capitalist framing. Sam Altman makes a point on it. It's a capitalism. So if one company fails, there will be a bunch of others who will fill the gap. Will it make OpenAI too central to fail? And it's kind of a little bit contradict with his first statement. I feel it. That's how he explains it. Governments should build their own compute reserves, like strategic oil reserves, but for intelligence. And in that case, the benefits should flow to citizens, not to private firms. Lower cost of capital, public ownership, national priority. Why invest fast ahead and not scale gradually? The only area where loan guarantees make sense, he says, is semiconductor fabrication. And it relates to the constant battle between China and US, who is first in this AI race. And that's important because supply chain in the US wants to be onshore to be able to win in this race. And he says that that's an industrial policy, not corporate insurance. And finally, he explains the spending. OpenAI expects to end 2025 with $30 billion of analyzed revenue and grow to hundreds of billions by 2030. Hundreds of billions are still not $1.4 trillion. He doesn't explain that. But he says that compute, sales, enterprise AI, robotics, scientific discovery, categories that don't exist yet but will, will bring this money into the company. So though he does not explain how hundreds of billions goes into a trillion, this is his growth logic behind trillion dollar commitments. Build capacity now because by the time it's needed, it will already be late. But underneath this post lays a deeper controversy and deeper tension between private ambition and public risk. Altman says if OpenAI fails, the market should handle it, right? But when a company signs up for more than a trillion in infrastructure, the market starts to look more like a state itself. We've seen versions of this before. The railroads of the 19th century built with private capital and public land grants. 
the nuclear industry with government insurance as the backdrop. And more recently, the Cheap Fabs under Cheaps Act. Each time, the governments and companies co-build the next layer of the economy. And each time, the balance between sovereignty and dependency shifts. So Altman's strategic resource of compute might be the next layer, a recognition that intelligence becomes itself an industrial resource. Meanwhile, reporting of NVIDIA OpenAI financing and circular deals explains why the market keeps asking where public risk begins and ends. And by the way, we just published a deep dive into GPU becoming a new currency. It's certainly worth checking if you want to understand the bigger picture. Altman closes his post by describing the scale of the bet. OpenAI is racing to build the backbone of an AI-powered economy. He sees it's in one of the most important things in the current age. Data centers, chips, energy, before the demand wave peaks. He says we need to be ready before it all becomes just a massive, massive, massive demand. His vision is the world of abundance for everyone. And cheap AI, like electricity, where compute becomes as accessible as electricity. And if he's right, this is the early stage of a new kind of public utility that everyone will need in just a few decades. But if he's wrong, the market will correct not the taxpayers. That's his vision. So here is the line that he tries to draw. Conviction without guarantees. But the thing here is that it's one thing to believe in something without proof. But when that belief drives 1.4 billion of dollars investment, it's no longer just belief. It becomes the system itself. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. I hope you will read the deep dive about GPU as new currency, I think it's a very interesting paradigm to think through and to use as you're thinking about the markets and the states and what's happening in AI. Please leave your comments and share with your friends. See you next week.